dystonia is the third most common movement disorder after essential tremor and Parkinson's disease, and it affects over 300,000 people in the United States alone and even more worldwide. Uh, the, there is a significant diagnostic challenge um, that is primarily associated with the absence of a biomarker for dystonia, which is a defined and objective um, measure as an indicator of a common process, pathophysiological process that happens uh, in this disorder. As a result, there is also no gold standard test uh, for diagnosis um, of this disorder and current diagnostic recommendations are largely remain based on uh, clinical symptom evaluation and syndromic approach. So uh, diagnosis, uh, in addition to this, uh, the abs to the absence of the biomarker and the test, the diagnosis is typically uh, impacted by the uh, large variability of symptomatology of this disorder, uh, the circumstances of evaluation, the stage of the patient, uh, the expertise uh, and experience of um, the clinician, and uh, other non-neurological uh, neurological conditions that can mimic dystonia symptoms. So I have been seeing these uh, challenges all, along my uh, medical and uh, scientific career and uh, being trained as a clinician, um, I, my focus has been on improving clinical management of this disorder and uh, through understanding its pathophysiology and understanding how we can improve uh, diagnostic and therapeutic interventions in this patient. So this is a kind of a larger picture of how we started thinking about uh, this line of research. Um, in addition to this, there have been several methodological advances that allowed us to dive deeper into into the pathophysiology of this disorder, uh, based uh, both on uh, development on the development of uh, neuroimaging methodologies as well as um, advanced um, machine learning algorithms. So bringing this together, um, you know, we were uh, well positioned to take on uh, this direction of research, and here is the outcome.